So again, it's Memorial Day weekend when we remember those in the military who died uh, in service to our country. And sometimes we simply treat this as a three-day weekend. But for those who have loved ones who died in service or even uh, those who have loved ones who are currently serving or maybe have served, uh, it means a lot more than that. It's important to remember. And this morning we are looking at two passages, uh, both of which address remembering. Uh, The first passage is Exodus 2, verses 23 to 25. Uh, You can go ahead and turn to Exodus 2 in your Bibles. It's the second book in the Bible. Uh, And then the second passage is Numbers 15, verses 37 to 41. And the book of Numbers is two books after Exodus. Uh, You can also look up Exodus 2 and Numbers 15 on your phones. But in the Exodus passage, it talks about God remembering his covenant when the Israelites are slaves in Egypt. And then the Numbers passage is about God telling the Israelites to wear tassels so that they would remember God's commands. Our scripture reader for this morning is Sid Perry. So Sid, please make your way on up to the podium. As he does, I'm gonna ask if you're able, please stand and face the center of the room. We read from the center of the room to remind us that scripture is to be central in our lives and we stand because we believe this is the word of God. And so, Sid, whenever you are ready, please read from Exodus 2 and Numbers 15. Exodus 2, 23 through 25. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Numbers 15, 37 through 41. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, Throughout the generations to come, You are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at, and so you will remember all the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by chasing after the lust of your own hearts and eyes. Then you will remember to obey all of my commands and will be consecrated to your God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Sid, thank you very much. You may be seated. Sometimes uh, the most mundane things in life can reveal deep truths about us. Uh, I know the school year just ended, so I'm sorry for bringing school up to both the students and, you know, mainly the teachers. Sorry about that. Uh, But in every level of school, elementary, middle school, high school, college, there is a commonplace activity that all of us have done. It's called raising your hand. When the teacher takes attendance, we raise our hand. Chuck Swoboda, here. If we want to answer a question in class, we raise our hand. Or if we want to ask a question in class, we raise our hand. There are various hand-raising methods. Uh, You can do the I'm really excited method. Uh, You can do the index finger hand raise. You can do the little as possible effort hand raise. You can use a pen as an accessory as you raise your hand. Raising our hands in class is how we are recognized. It's how we let the teacher know we are here. It's how we engage in the class. The need to be recognized, the need to be a part of something, the need to have our presence acknowledged is a fundamental need we all have. Sometimes the mundane things of life reveal deep truths. We all need to be recognized and acknowledged. And that need drives us more than we know. And while we've all been taught that God loves us and that God knows that we're here and that we matter, it doesn't always feel that way. 
there are times in life when it seems like God has forgotten us. So what does it mean for God to remember? Again, what causes us to think that God has forgotten us is adversity. Tragedy strikes, we suffer, and long periods of time go by, and there doesn't seem to be any relief. And it is the inevitable adversity that we face in life that causes us to wonder, God, where are you? Do you not see what is happening here? And that was the case with the Israelites, going back to verse 23 of Exodus 2, where it says, During that long period, the king of Egypt died, and the Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out. And their cry for help, because of their slavery, went up to God. During that long period, it says, the king of Egypt died. Now, this is the king who initiated the oppression of the Israelites, forced them into slave labor, dealt with them ruthlessly. He was the one that had the babies thrown into the Nile. It was his daughter who drew Moses out of the Nile. It was in his household that Moses was raised. After Moses killed an Egyptian, it was this king who tried to kill Moses, forcing Moses to flee into the desert out of fear for his life. And for 40 years, Moses would remain an outcast. It was during that long period, Scripture says, that the king eventually died. That long period. It wasn't just the length of time that made it long. It was what happened during that time. That was the long period of suffering for them. And all of us have long periods of suffering. And again, it's not just the length of time. It's what happens that makes that part of our lives a long period of suffering. Things happen that make our hearts break. Our marriage ends, or our parents' marriage ends, or our kids' marriage ends, or we have people that we love and care about who pass away, our moms and dads, our siblings, our sons and daughters, or maybe we suffer from financial uncertainty or ruin, where we lose everything we've worked hard for. It could be a health crisis, a terminal illness, a tragic accident, all of these bad things in life. God allows them to happen, and we wonder, God, do you see what's happening? Why don't you do something? The Israelites, they groaned in their slavery and cried out. If you have the passage open in verse 23, you will notice that it does not say that they cried out to God. It simply says they cried out. And then their cry for help went up to God. Whether we cry out to God or whether we just cry, God hears us. And God hears our cries in our adversity. And when God hears our cries, it gets his attention. Going back to the passage in Exodus, verse 24, God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And so God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Sometimes when we talk about God, our language limits us, even sometimes the language in the Bible. It says that God heard their groaning and remembered, remembered his covenant. God remembered, like implying that God forgot. When we talk about God, we often anthropomorphize him, meaning we attribute human characteristics to something that is not human. Uh, We do this all the time. Uh, You see it most prominent in movies. Zootopia, Little Mermaid, Garfield, Kung Fu Panda, animals and objects are given human characteristics. While we do this with God, God remembered. Well, God doesn't forget things. So why does it say that God remembered? What is the Bible saying here? Well, that word for remembered 
is zaher. And that word has with it an image of piercing or poking. It's the idea of pricking or piercing, which again, it also means to be mindful, to account for. Look, if I poke you with a needle, you are going to respond. Likewise, this word for remembering is, if I am mindful of something, it's going to impact what I do. So my wife is allergic to avocado. If I remember that, if I am mindful of it, if I take that into account, then when I am getting her a burrito or a taco, I am going to make sure there is no guacamole on it. Zahir is something that impacts what I do. Maybe a better example is like when little kids keep poking us to get our attention. Mom, 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 mom. Dad, 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 dad. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? They keep doing it until they get our attention. And when their cries finally get our attention, we respond. And that is what the Bible means when it says God remembered. Their cries got his attention, and now he is going to do something. And this understanding of God remembering, meaning God's going to do something, happens a lot in the Bible. God remembered, that word Zahir appears in Genesis 8, when God remembers Noah at the end of the 40 days of the flood. God remembers Noah and stops the rain and eventually brings them to dry ground. In Genesis 19, God remembers Abraham when God is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. God remembers Abraham and brought Lot out of those cities, sparing Lot from destruction because the scripture says God remembered Abraham. Rachel in Genesis 30 was barren and couldn't have any children. And she watched her sister have multiple kids. And the scripture says God remembered Rachel and enabled her to have kids. For God to remember means God is going to do something. Now, we all know that God doesn't respond the way we always want him to. And we're usually not very happy with God's timing either. There are lots of reasons why God doesn't respond how we want. There are lots of reasons why God doesn't respond when we want. But it's never because God doesn't care. The passage says that God looked on the Israelites and was concerned. Now, if it was up to me, I would have God immediately deliver them out of Egypt and take them to the promised land. But that's not what happened. God didn't immediately act to end their suffering. But it wasn't because he didn't care. When God doesn't address our suffering how we want, it's easy to think that he doesn't care, but God does see us in our suffering. It does cause him concern. He is doing something about it. We have God's attention. And just a quick side note on prayer. Jesus told a parable about prayer, and the point of the parable is we should keep praying and praying and praying and praying until God responds. Now, God, now, Jesus in his parable doesn't use a child as part of the story. But to me, his parable about keep pestering God until he responds reminds me a lot like a kid, dad, 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 dad. So as we continue to wait on God in our suffering. We are to keep praying and pestering him about it. So, in our adversity, God has our in our adversity, God has our attention. He remembers us. God wants us to respond in kind and remember him. He wants us to answer back in remembering. Going to the passage in Numbers 15, verse 37. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corner of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. 
you will have these tassels to look at, and so you will remember all the commands of the Lord, that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by chasing after the lusts of your own hearts and eyes. Then you will remember to obey all my commands and will be consecrated to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. So God commands the people to put tassels on their clothes. These tassels are called tzitzit. And the reason for wearing the tzitzit is to remember all the commands of the Lord. And that word for remember is the exact same word that is used in Exodus 2 when God remembers. Zahir. Which again means to prick or pierce or like a child who pokes you until they get your attention. I would imagine that wearing these tassels on your garments would be bothersome because every time you walked, those things are going to swing and sway. They're going to hit your hand. They're going to hit your side. If you're working in the field, I'm sure they got in the way. Any kind of everyday activity, you had to work around these tassels. They were a constant presence in your life always reminding you that they are there. Which is the whole point? Because these tassels were God's way of saying, don't forget about me, don't forget about me, don't forget about me. Remember who I am. I am the one who is for you, not against you. Remember what I've done. I've redeemed and delivered you. The tassels are like a constant poking. And when we remember God's commands, it impacts what we do. That's what remember means. Now, in our adversity, we think God has forgotten us. What is more true is that in our privilege, we often forget him. God remembers us, and he just wants us to answer in kind. God wants us to remember him, which ironically is the hardest when times are good. You see, the blessings from God are meant to lead us back to God. As it says in Romans 2, Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. The ultimate example of God's kindness, the pinnacle of God's love, is the cross. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son so that we would not perish but have eternal life. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus rose from the dead. It actually happened. It changes everything. And the cross reminds us that God always takes action to our adversity. Now, God never promises to keep us free from trouble. In fact, Jesus said the opposite. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. So trouble is something we should expect. But Jesus also said, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So while we should expect trouble, it never gets the final say. God always remembers. It is vital to remember God's goodness. God remembering means he takes action on our behalf. And he wants us to respond in kind to remember him in everything we say and in everything we do we are called to remember him please pray with me and Lord for your constant attention and concern we are grateful thank you for not overlooking us, for seeing us, for remembering us. And Lord, we ask 
that you would help us remember you. And Lord, that we would, in everything we say and do, honor you. And it's in the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Receive God's blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.